Hey guys, welcome back to another vlog. This is the Air Aid Lord. Today I'm going to be going over some of the controversy surrounding the announcement that President Snow is actually the main protagonist of the prequel book by Susan Collins to the Hunger Games series. This was announced last year. The book was announced last year. It's coming out August, or August July of 2020, this upcoming summer. <clears throat> and it was just announced via some excerpts that President Snow, a much younger President Snow, 64 years-ish from the Hunger Games in the past, is the President Snow we're going to get and it's the one who's going to be telling the story of this prequel. The way the excerpt painted it had a lot of PR jargon, a lot of marketing to it. Was seemed to be seemed to be humanizing President Snow, trying to maybe put the question out there. Even though this guy's a horrible fascist, evil, maniacal ty tyrant. Is it possible that he has some redeeming qualities that maybe he turned into a monster because of something in his childhood and he's misunderstood? Could he actually be a hero? Is there something we don't really know? So, that part that I just said is an, is an, is an abridged version of the excerpt that came out. And the excerpt, like I said felt very PRE. It felt like it had a lot of jargon in it that was trying to entice you to pre-order the book, had a lot of marketing behind it, and I don't think all of the cards are being revealed by Susan Collins, by the publisher. I think a lot of things are being kept under wraps. However, being that this is the internet, there was a very strong reaction from people, especially on Twitter, it could have been elsewhere, but I saw this as a trend on Twitter. I saw President Snow, and that was it. That was the trend. It was trending number one. Briefly, uh, I'm filming this the day it happened, so January 21st of 2020. Uh, in the mid-afternoon, I saw this trend, and I just clicked on it to see what people were saying, because some are news articles come up about it, so I also learned more information about the actual uh, announcement. So when I was browsing, I saw a lot of hate comments, a lot of hate comments. There were some people that were saying that there were other characters more worthy of a prequel, such as Hamish, uh, amongst others. I think Hamish was one of the more popular ones, <laughs> um, just because of his eccentric nature, both in the book and the movie. Um... Given that he has a history with the Hunger Games, that also might have made some sense. Um, so you had those people, and then you had other people who were saying that it was wrong because this is celebrating a tyrant. This, in an election year, if we're going to say an American election year where a new president will be voted upon, that this is wrong to celebrate a tyrant and to talk about the upbringings of a tyrant and make it seem like he's some sort of sympathetic hero that has just been misunderstood this entire time, okay? Now, the way I look at it, and this is the main meat of this video, okay? Because the announcement happened, the announcement is the announcement. President Snow, younger President Snow being the protagonist of the prequel book by Susan Collins. The, meat, the main meat of this video is all the controversy that's come out about this. There's one particular comment that I kind of latched onto here that I can give you as an overarching example. It comes in the form of um, this individual, Aiden Thomas, mentions, I couldn't be more disappointed by the next Hunger Games being about fucking President Snow. And trying to paint him as a misunderstood hero. Are you kidding me? The very last thing I'm interested in is humanizing a fascist dictator because he has a tragic past. He then goes on to promote some works, but he mentions if you want some good dystopic with gays and uprising and brown folks and gays, uh, maybe it won't be. Maybe they're trying to throw us off. That is a possibility. Um, he does almost contradict his own statement by talking about what I was saying earlier, how I felt like there was a lot of PRE statements made in the excerpts about 
is he a hero or is he just he just is this evil intentions because there's no there's no concrete information you have to read the book to find out um but what i i dislike the, polit the, the it's the political side of this is what i don't like okay i believe as somebody who writes books who writes stories all right they're not published yet they're not available yet one day obviously my ultimate goal and i've shared this with my youtube audience very briefly, not often, because I'm still in a, de in a, a, a developmental stage, but I hope to be an author, for spe specifically for YA books. I hope, this is what I hope to do eventually someday. I have a couple of projects in the works. One, I'm really trying to plot and and create and uh, just give it its, its, its fine, fine craft, the fine craft that it deserves. I've <laughs> written two previous books but over time querying it was a bit of a rough, rough patch and I think as an author and as someone who's trying to understand the industry I've grown and it takes time to grow you don't just throw a manuscript at an agent slash editor slash publishing house and just get your project out the next day it's a very lengthy process and I've kind of had to been uh, from going to conferences to talking to different people in the industry, I've had to understand that and really take a methodical approach. So with everything I've learned, investigated, all the ways I've plunged myself into this industry, into the careful art of writing, I definitely appreciate the storytelling process. And, and no matter what medium, all right? And my fans who frequent my channel know this because of The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead is one of the main shows that I now feature and talk about. All sorts of theories from uh, the movie that's coming out sometime in the future to all of the the, the main show to the spinoffs. It's one of my favorite pieces of storytelling and I have many others. I've talked about Game of Thrones a little bit on the channel. I celebrate storytelling any way I can. Whether it's talking about it on my YouTube channel or writing it, writing my own my own original creative stories. I respect the process of storytelling, and in my Walking Dead vlogs, which any of you can watch, I take time to break down how a plot, the story, specifically The Walking Dead, has good and bad points to it. All right, I've been both critical and I praise the show because of how much I appreciate good storytelling, character development, world building, all the essentials you need, amongst many others, to craft and execute and a uh, masterful story to get it as close to perfect to make sure it has a lasting impact on the reader all of those things in mind okay and i think that there has been this conformist culture this conformist culture that has come out of the woodworks to use a metaphor it's come out of the woodworks and it <clears throat> it basically takes marginalized individuals and this is where it gets a little political and as i mentioned in the individual uh, the about the election year this gets a little political it gets it gets to our human fundamentals about who is being represented in what way because you have authors and it seems like the trend now at least from what i've seen and with young adult i can't speak for other genres but for at least the ya fiction young adult that's what YA stands for. It seems like there is this effort to represent the diverse, to represent marginalized audiences, authors, whether that's LGBTQ, whether that's uh, uh, folks of color, folks of different creeds, religions, <clears throat> whatever it is. Basically, it's the nice way of saying we don't want a white male to be the centerpiece of a book we've seen it too often there are way too many stories movies tv shows what have you where the protagonist is a male hero white macho saves the day and we're tired of that being the narrative and now it's time for those figures to step aside so that other figures can enter the picture okay 
Now, let me just say this. Up front, I want this to be very clear. I have absolutely no problem with other religions, creeds, races, anything. Sexual orientations, genders, whatever. I have no problem with, with your desire to tell a story about who you are, okay? Because I'm doing this without a webcam right now. I actually probably should be doing this with a webcam, but for any, I mean, I have multiple vlogs of myself in my channel, and I'm a white male. That's who I am. So when I write my books, a lot of the characters, some of the characters, not all of the characters, might be white men as well because authors often write about how they feel how they've been brought up how they've been mistreated what they've enjoyed about life what they hate about life and because they're in the skin that they were given when they were born that's what they naturally write about okay and i fully fully accept and want authors of those diverse opinions to come forth and tell their stories. I think any story can be good. The definition, like what makes a great story is not what races or religions or conform, like basically, oh, like if there's four uh, lesbian characters and four black characters and 15 Asian characters, that makes this story uh, more powerful than a story that has two black characters and the rest are white men and women, okay? Those two, uh, the, the two stories, hypotheticals that I just painted must be compared by their ability to tell a story. Are the characters believable? Is the plot well-developed? Are the, is the story world structured? Do we feel an attachment to these characters? Do they pull at our heartstrings? Is the ending cliche? Is there a deus ex machina? Is there a boring prologue? I could go on and on with all of the jar writing jargon that could come up when you're trying to create a story that can affect your story in a multitude of ways. But those aspects affect stories equally, okay? Whether that person, I, like I just said, whether they're gay, black, straight, white, it doesn't matter. A story is a story. Like I said, we're all human beings. We all have a story to tell. We all have great stories, horrible stories, any kind of story you can think of, we have stories, okay? The, 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 the way that writers come to be writers is because their mastery of the English language or other languages... It is so to a to a point that people it just reads like like honey like just 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 pure honey on a piece of bread and you, you you slap another piece of bread on top of the honey and you just take a bite and it just it just oozes across your teeth and down your throat like it's the prose jumps off the page and becomes alive that is what makes a good story it doesn't have anything to do with who how many people were represented and in what way it that doesn't matter okay i'm all for representation across all genders races creeds what have you i'm all for it i have many friends who have different sexual orientations who are different races i am very close with them and whenever they have a story to tell if they had a story to tell if they wanted to put it into writing into nonfiction or fiction i would be i would be the first one there with a picket sign saying read this guy's book or gal's book i would be the first one but i think it's ridiculous and i'm going to bring this point back to the beginning i think it's ridiculous that this book this prequel by a renowned like susan collins is one of the most popular ya authors out there and she is getting slammed by her fans and critics for making the decision to put President Snow as the protagonist. And I think some people have a point because maybe they were hoping for Hamish or another character that was a good guy. They wanted a good guy's backstory. They didn't want the bad guy. They looked there like, oh, like of, of all ways you could have done a prequel, you choose the bad guy. Okay, let's have a civil discussion if, you, if you're a big fan of Hunger Games, you can break it down and say, like, here are the reasons why I don't think President Snow should be 
the 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 protagonist and you know you you could have done much better with this other character let's have a civil discussion about it that's a fine conversation it's not a fine conversation to say oh well this is a horrible book to release because this is an election year oh okay yeah yeah because in 2020 we're gonna have donald trump versus a uh, a liberal candidate and you know the liberal better win because if Trump wins, then, you know, this book could have had something to do with it. This book talks about dictators, and it's a young dictator, <clears throat> and how he grows up, and, oh, like, maybe, maybe this is sending a bad message about, you know, maybe we should humanize, you know, maybe Donald Trump, when he was younger, maybe we should have humanized him more and been more sympathetic towards him. That's what they're saying about President Snow, and that's what they're saying about Donald Trump. There are people who make that comparison, who make statements like that totally political. Make the book totally political. And, the, and, then, and then they'll go further and say, don't support, like the, the individual's tweet that I just wrote, or uh, read, don't support this kind of book, support this kind of book, the one that has brown folks and gays and uprisings. Okay. Like I said, there those two stories, the story about President Snow as a kid growing up, and the story you're referencing, the hypothetical about brown folks and gays, I will compare those two stories on their ability to tell a good story. I don't care what you got going on here. Okay, awesome. Brown folks and gays. I'll read it. I, I want to see a good story about brown folks and gays. I want twists and turns. I want interesting characters, cool villains. I want to see a good story. But you know what? If the story about President Snow as a kid is more intriguing to me than your story about brown folks and gays, and it's got better villains and character development, that's the story I'm going with. And it has nothing to do with the fact that you have diverse messages in your book. That has nothing to do with it. It is about story story because again as an author i'm always trying to improve my craft i am always trying to say how can i make this paragraph better how can i make this sentence better how can i make this character better these are things that transcend every single piece of literature every worthy piece of literature these things are important and i deal with them every single day so we're changing the conversation and we're now trying to make this is like an extra thing an asterisk that every ya book has to have where it has to have this woke i hate that word woke message where you need to be aware of other races and other religions and other creeds okay if you're a decent human being who respects others you recognize those things you recognize them. And a good story should have some of those things in it because we live in a diverse world. So if you are, your story takes place in New York, it shouldn't just be white men and white women. You know, there's a diverse population of people that live in New York City, okay? I understand that. You gotta make it realistic. If there's just, um, if it's just all white guys in the book, that's pretty unrealistic and also from a marketing standpoint you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot because a lot of people would like to see girls they'd like to see you know like you said brown folks and gays like i understand for marketing purposes that's a different conversation see there's different conversations you have based on the goal okay if the goal is storytelling if the goal is marketing these things all come together like a well-oiled machine they all come together to make a finished product that we can all sit back and say wow that was something all right and it was because of the storytelling and the ability to weave a world together that's why we liked it we didn't like it because it made some grandiose statement about how we should all be ashamed to be white because again like this this is like reverse racism where i feel like oh should i feel sorry that i'm a white guy like i'm sorry like these are the same feelings that people of color had years ago before civil civil rights where they were born african-american 
they couldn't change the color of their skin and they were being harassed for it. They were being not allowed to go into bathrooms. And again, I am in no way comparing me growing up to those circumstances. But I'm saying the way it's being classified in a hypothetical sense, especially via the internet, via the internet, I should, the vehicle, that's the vehicle. This is being done through the internet. It's trying to make the same comparisons that because these other things haven't been represented enough, the storytelling has to conform to those things. And, you know, people, white guys who have had the advantage or other people of my race who have treated those who are diverse poorly, that then gives people like me a bad name. It's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm just a white guy who is a nice person, respects his family, his friends has a, a love for writing, wants to tell stories. And so why well, I got to suffer now because I don't get to have my book released or I, I can't enjoy this story without, without lashing, being lashed out at because I, I like it. Like I like the president snow young story as opposed to the Brown folks and gays. Cause again, what if I, I said, I just brought this up. If I read both these books, I'm reading this particular tweet from this individual, Aiden Thomas. If I read both of the books that he's pointing out to me, and I didn't like one or the other, again, it, it would be because of how I enjoyed the story, okay? It would be because of how I enjoyed the story. I have watched so many different TV shows, so many different movies. I play video games. That's another form of entertainment. I, all sorts of things. All sorts of stories. I've seen bazillions of stories, read bazillions of books, nonfiction. I read philosophy and existentialism. I've seen perspectives from all different views. And as a writer, I tried to do that so I could improve my craft. So I'm never going to have any type of b b bias, any type of bias <clears throat> against anyone because I judge the stories equally. And I feel like not enough people do that. And that's where the problem comes in. Not enough people have this standpoint. So it's the us versus them. Okay. It's, it's extremes. It's extremes. And this is where, and this is a very, very harsh comparison to make, but this is where the extremism of how, um, Trump supporters have their extremism about how things are supposed to be. And the, it's like the woke culture versus keeping things, you know, make America white again, like the racist culture. But they're both using hate as a vehicle to make people feel a certain way rather than using the things that all bring us together as a means of trying to tell a story or try to make someone feel better. That's all I'm really trying to say. All right. I, 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 I'm not trying to make some sort of horrible comparison. I probably shouldn't have even brought that comparison up to be fair, because you get into a lot of hot water when you bring up the political stuff, but a lot of the writing, storytelling, young adult stuff crosses over into things that are going on in our contemporary society. And I just think that good stories come in all shapes and sizes. And I think it's ridiculous that because of experiences that people feel they've been wronged like it's basically a competition who's been the most wronged okay trump supporters say oh i've been wronged i'm the you know, the marginalized you know, i'm the white guy in america and i feel like i'm losing my my rights to carry a firearm i feel like this woke culture has taken over and i feel like i'm under attack okay trump 2020 that's not all trump 2020 is about i'm just kind of that was a very abridged version all right and then you've got the other side that says, we feel that we're the small one. You know, we can't be, uh, we can't show our gender, sexuality, race without attacking, being attacked by the other side, you know? And so now we, it, the, like, it's the same mentality. It's the same mentality where people just want to feel like they're in control of their lives. They want to feel like they matter. They want to feel the happiness. And when they feel the walls closing in on them, when they feel like they have nowhere to go, they lash out, they attack. The other side's to blame. You're, 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 you're horrible. The other side's to blame. And uh, all works of literature, like the works of literature should support the way I feel.
And it's, again, natural for somebody to want to read something or write something about how they feel, but everyone can tell a story. There are so many human beings on this planet. There are so many different ways to tell a story, and it's not just one clear-cut way, okay? All right. I could go on and on, but I think I've <laughs> I've tried to, to make this point as clear as possible to all of you, and I know I'm probably going to get a lot of interesting messages, especially if I post this about <laughs> some of the places I'm thinking of posting this. Um... This is just my opinion from a passionate author, from somebody who likes to tell stories, for somebody who appreciates b b bold approaches, uh, you know, The Road Less Traveled, Robert Frost. I like The Road Less Traveled. I like when they, people do things different way. They look outside the box. They want to find an interesting, intriguing way to tackle problems in life. I like when that is the objective, okay? And yeah, I, I, I just can't, I can't think of it in any other terms. I just, I, I want, I want the connectedness. I want people to, to appreciate mediums for what they are because story, because storytelling is something I love. Like I said, and the moment all of this political stuff starts bogging it down, it takes away from the enjoyment, okay? And I want to feel happy when I read and write. I don't want to feel angry and feel like I got to get into fights with people, all right? That's what it boils down to, all right? So, comment. Tell me what you thought about the announcement. I know I just went a lot of different topics and talked about a lot of different things that cover a lot of... It's a very contemporary topic, and I know a lot of my fans are used to Walking Dead content from me, and this is a very unusual vlog, but I just felt inspired to make this. I feel like I've had this boiling inside of me for a very long time, especially with how long I've been writing, as I mentioned to you guys. So this was a long time coming, and I felt like it needed to come out. So let me know what you guys think. Comment, rate, subscribe, and... Um, Stay tuned for more content. If you guys want more vlogs like this, I will try to appease, but it's got to be something from the heart and something that makes sense for me to talk about. All right. Thank you very much. And I'll link Aiden's tweets because I know I've been, that was my main reference point in this. I was kind of using him as like the other side I was talking about. Uh, nothing against him personally. I just wanted to use it as a point of topic. So I will link that so you guys know what I'm talking about. Thank you. Peace out.